I want to talk about two espresso machines that I've been using for, I don't know, uh, one of them for a couple years and the other one I've been using for a couple months. And I actually happen to have these espresso machines right here. actually don't own these because of the portability factor. Um, I own them more because of uh, two things. One, I wanted to find something that, uh, that didn't cost that much. And two, I wanted to find something that could reliably, repeatably create espresso that can match some of the best places that I go to in Chicagoland. Have you ever noticed how when you go to a cafe and you order uh, order a shot, it takes a little time. Uh, a good barista who knows what they're doing is actually taking care to extract your shot properly um, with a certain brew recipe and ratio that they're paying attention to and, and, and getting the grind right. There's a lot that goes into really creating an espresso. And I will say this, Neither of these two machines is going to make it super easy to make the perfect shot every single time. But one of these machines will make it easier than the other. All right, I'm not going to fuss over this too much, so I'm just going to do it. I'm putting 15 grams in each one of these. I'm going to try to, I just want to just kind of do a simple comparison. Now, something you'll notice here, I had to make this doohickey if you've seen my other videos because I need a lot of pressure when I'm using the rock. And I kind of use that as like a little clip, a little lock. So I'm gonna fill this uh, about a half an inch from the top. Everything's been warmed. Again, this is not perfect, but for the sake of the video, we'll get the idea here, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a little pressure on this for a pre-infusion for about three, four, five seconds. I'm gonna start my timer and let's see what we get. Now, even with my little clamp on here, I'm not really getting that much, I'm not getting enough, uh, it's not holding my porta filter enough and that's something I found over time uh, well look this is not gonna end up great so it's not really fair uh, this looks horrible and let me just say it normally comes out much better than that but look man I had some major problems here now I'm not saying I had these problems when I first bought the machine but what I noticed is over time this plastic piece here uh, I've broken four of them because I create a lot of pressure when I'm doing this, which is also why I said I had to start using this little clamp thing that I made to hold the porta filter still. But so much went wrong with this, but I guess that's just what we get this time. And if you want to see a much better test with this machine, you can check out my other videos. I think I'm going to have to say goodbye to my rock. You've been good to me, Rock. All the little pieces of equipment I bought to work with you. I love you. Bye. This is actually day two. This plastic reservoir, I've cracked four of them. The first time I did it, um, I actually had burn marks on my neck for about three days. They finally figured out to actually um, if you own one, you'll know what I'm talking about. They've actually put these little supports in um, vertically to help. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna put this water about uh, half an inch from the top, okay? Uh, I do not do this double pump thing. Um, now, I will tell you what happened yesterday. I think it's actually cracked somewhere small on the inside. So we'll see if that does it again. And if it does it again today, I, I can't really complete the test. And for me then like, you know, it's kind of over for the rock. It's going into the closet. I, I don't have the heart to throw it in the trash, but let's see. So I've kind of been letting it 
pre-infuse a little bit, but no, I can see it's already leaking water, which is not supposed to be doing that. And it's because, no, this is no good, man. See, I can show you when I take the, this apart and I'll give you like a close up, but this is not supposed to be going like this. Okay, I mean, I got water in my shop, which I don't want. And this coffee that I'm using is great, so it's a real shame that my rock appears to be broken because the plastic is cracked. So, I did not time that because I kind of knew that this was going to be a bust. Um, I can tell you right away for this shot, I did not get enough pressure that I normally would want and I already know that I can't push this further than what I just did now because when I did it yesterday, uh, I, the water literally was just coming up out of the sides of where the plastic meets the, um, the aluminum. This is probably going to be a little bitter because this is a, this is a bright uh, coffee from Ethiopia. I actually just came from the roaster and had them pull me a shot the way that, that, that it should be, and it was delicious. It's a natural sun-dried. It's supposed to be strawberry and bright, real berry. So, let's see. Um, it's, um, there's a little berry, but a lot of sour. <laughs> so, um, again, it, it, it's under-extracted. Because I couldn't grind it fine enough because it would have made the machine kind of like spit water out. Um, I don't know. This might be my goodbye shot for, for the rock. Um, I'm gonna see if I can like just, uh, uh, see if I can show you what, what the problem is by doing a close up. Maybe if rock sees this, um, you gotta fix this man because you got competition coming. Well, it's here, so you better hurry. Look at this. Look at all the gunk. And that's because, you know, from years of using this, but this, this started happening maybe like about eight months after. But you can see how nasty it gets, and that's from the lime. But you can even see that the plastic material has begun to crack. And you've got a loose reservoir here. Anyways, let's maybe leave this here and go take a look at the flare. This is very different. It's a very small diameter, and it's a deep, it makes a deeper bed, so the, the puck is, is uh, thicker. Um, that's just a little difference. Here's a funnel that comes with the kit that they give you. Um, I will say this, uh, I ground this much coarser than I ground what I just pulled in the rock. Um, I'd say it's two times coarser than what I ground for the rock. This is designed much differently, and you do not have to tamp this real hard. Um, I mean, I just do it until I start to feel some resistance, okay? And then you put this there. Um, I've got my shot glass teared out. This is the stainless steel brew head, okay? But before you put that on, you gotta put your dispersion filter on there, okay? Dry that off. And then this here is a plunger. And I'm just gonna tell you, man, uh, Sergio is the name of the guy who designed this whole thing. Uh, this is brilliant. Solid stainless steel. I mean, I'm just gonna drop it so you can hear how heavy it is. <laughs> this is not light. Um, this is brilliant. Just smart. Rock, you made a plastic piece to go uh, as a reservoir for a technique that requires some violent pressure. It's just, it's just not smart. It's not safe and it's not durable. This is all of that, okay? So you put this on there. All of this stuff has been heated. Again, this is not to show like my uh, perfect technique. This is kind of more to just show you the, the basics of uh, the differences between the two machines. Um, there's a little line in where you can clearly see. Fill it up to the line. 
put the piston plunger in there. Now, I usually go for around five or six seconds. Five, 1,000. There we go, I'm gonna start my timer. Now, I probably put a little more pressure, just a little bit more pressure on this than you might see in some other videos, but I'm not really putting a ton of pressure. Now we've got a great flow. The crema looks gorgeous. Uh, just to let you know, I'm not a crema freak. I want it to taste good. I don't really care how much, uh, if it looks like so much crema. Some people that are doing these YouTube videos are like really bragging about like how much crema. Uh, I'm fine with a normal amount of crema. But I will say, <laughs> this machine produces some crazy crema. That's what a shot should look like. I pulled it maybe for like a, a couple seconds longer than I might have wanted to. I probably could have ground this even a little coarser than what it is. And uh, so I'll give this a taste. This is the same roast that I had before. And this is a natural sun-dried, which means it's gonna have berry, uh, berry flavors. And this is specifically strawberry, and this is nice and bright. This is like 90% there. I mean, this is the first shot that I've pulled with this coffee. I just came from the, uh, the roaster Gaslight. It's in Logan Square neighborhood in Chicago. This tastes so close to what I had when I was just there about 30 minutes ago. Um, if you're a process-based person, if you really like to feel what you're doing, that's a huge difference between this and those three to five hundred dollar uh, like automatic machines. That they some of them don't allow you to adjust your dose. And um, anyways, I, I don't want that quick experience. I want to figure out how to make my coffee taste like what the roaster intended when they put the bean in the bag. If you're thinking about the flare versus the rock, really, there's no competition. Uh, the flare kills it, and it's basically the same price. I mean, it's, you know, you're talking about 20 to $50 more depending on which model you might pick up, but it's not even close. The flare kills it. It's that brew head. So, rock, you better figure it out because flare is gonna take you down. Two, three,